Okay, good morning. Thank you for coming to our second webinar in the Environmental Matters series. Um, it is entitled, A Superior Solution to Unwanted Medications. This webinar is brought to you by the City of Superior Environmental Services Division of, Public, of the Public Works Department. Um, I'm Jillian Edwards, and later on in the program, we will have Officer Bonnie Bestie, the Community Policing Officer from Superior Police Department, joining us. Um, so in this webinar, we're going to be talking about issues with unwanted, unused, or expired medications in the home and about the issues with incorrect disposal of them. Uh, we'll be looking at it from both an environmental and a law enforcement standpoint. Um, so let's get started. All right, just some background information. Uh, there were $200 billion worth of pharmaceuticals sold in 2007 in the United States. Um, over $1 billion worth of prescription drugs are either being stored in people's medicine cabinets or th are thrown away. So these are drugs that are not being used. Um, the healthcare industry actually flushes 250 million pounds of medications per year. Um, so there are a lot of medications that aren't being used. And there's a big problem with overprescription because physicians don't necessarily have time to spend with their patients. They're very busy. And there is also a lack of alternative treatments. So just an example of this, there was a national survey of adults who had sore throats. 73% um, of them were given antibiotics when the actual rate of bacterial infections where they would need antibiotics for sore throats was between 5 and 17 percent. So a lot of people getting medication they didn't uh, necessarily need. Um, and with regard to the lack of alternative treatments, there was uh, a study done in Great Britain, actually, about how um, providers would do, would do antidepressants because there was a lack of alternative therapies like counseling um, and psychiatry available. So this, this all results in a lot of extra medication in the environment that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Uh, so the problem of pills. Pharmaceutical chemicals are absorbed into your body when you take medication. That's why they work. But a lot of people might think that um, these prescriptions, they get absorbed into your body and all of them are in your body working on the issue that they were prescribed for. But this isn't exactly true. Some of the chemicals are excreted from your body when you use the bathroom. Uh, this water obviously goes to the wastewater treatment plant when you flush the toilet. If you flush leftover pills down the toilet, they also go to the wastewater treatment plant. So um, there end up being or there end up being a lot of prescriptions that are going to the wastewater treatment plant. And a lot of people think that wastewater treatment plants can take care of medication, but the truth is there are no wastewater treatment plants in the United States specifically equipped to remove pharmaceuticals. They might get rid of some of them, but most wastewater treatment plants can't get rid of all levels of pharmaceuticals in the water. So the water is treated and released into Lake Superior. So this water that's going out, it's clean, it's not sewage anymore, but it does still have prescription medications in it. Um, there is one technique, reverse osmosis, which can remove almost all medication from the water, but it's very expensive and it leaves multiple gallons of polluted water for every gallon of clean water, so it's not really that efficient. Um, and there was a study by the USGS, the EPA, and the Fish and Wildlife Service that studied pharmaceuticals in areas of concern, and that included around Duluth, um, and they found pharmaceuticals, steroids, and antidepressants in the water. So some environmental impacts. Um, actually, Northland News Center recently has been doing some coverage about pharmaceuticals in the water. But aquatic organisms are exposed to low doses of many medications. So when it leaves the wastewater treatment plant and ends up in the water, the things that live in the water are being exposed to all of these different medications. Um, exposure has been found to impact reproduction in fish and amphibians. And male fish are actually becoming feminized. And this is uh, thought to be due to the prevalence of synthetic estrogens from hormone replacement therapies and oral contraceptives. 
um, some other another study from Sweden found that um, anti-anxiety pills in the water are actually making fish more reckless and engaging in risky behavior. They're more antisocial and aggressive, which it could lead to a decline in fish populations because the fish are you know, leaving their schools and doing things that are more risky, which makes them more vulnerable to predation. So having these pharmaceuticals in the water could actually lead to a decline in fish population because of their behavior and also because of their reproduction changes. Um, there's some human health impact information too. Um, not much is known about the impacts of pharmaceuticals in the water because it's extremely low doses, but it's chronic exposure. So most things you would only take for maybe like a week or two weeks or if you have a chronic condition, you know, a few years. But this is over your whole lifetime. So they really don't know what's going to happen because these drugs are approved for shorter term use. And um, when it's in your drinking water, it's a lot longer. Uh, some s preliminary studies have found that uh, pharmaceuticals in water can cause slowed growth of cells but faster growth of cancer cells. Another issue with pharmaceuticals in water is that the effects of the medication mix have not been studied. So every time you go to the doctor they always ask you what kind of medications you're on because some mi mixes of medications have adverse reactions. So they don't want to prescribe you something if it's going to react negatively with something else that you're taking. So for example, like antihistamines and antidepressants together can, um, the effects of one thing can, can um, be increased by the other drug. So each drug is specifically supposed to do one thing and when they're mixed together it can, it can have some bit really bad reactions. Um, also, certain populations may be more vulnerable to the pharmaceuticals in the water. Um, for example, fetuses, so pregnant women, are more vulnerable. Uh, there was a study by the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer S Center. They found that exposure to pharmaceutical estrogen during fetal development can reprogram tissue to determine if tum tumors will develop. So actually the pharmaceuticals can impact whether or not you'll have a tumor later in life. Um, and this study was done on rats, but they they said that it could have human health impacts as well. So next I'm going to pass the microphone over to Officer Bestie and she's going to talk about pharmaceuticals from a law enforcement standpoint. Good morning everyone, thank you for joining us. We'll talk a little bit about what's happening here in Superior with prescription drug theft and maybe some ways that you can protect yourself and hopefully spread the word to your family members and also aid them in protecting them, themselves from being victims of crime. Prescription theft is a large problem in our area. You never know who might be addicted to certain types of prescription medications. We talk about and hear about people having medications stolen right from their home most people keep their medications in their bathroom. We're trying to change that because if you have maybe a gathering at your house, thefts have happened at graduation parties where there's many people coming and going and their prescription medications are in their bathroom. So people have access to them in a secure environment for the time. So someone you know might bring a friend over, you don't know who they are, and they might have a problem with prescription medications. And if a crime, if the opportunity exists, they might commit a crime and steal your medications. So we ask people to secure their medications, not in their bathroom, um, somewhere else where you can have more, you can have better sight and access to it, or hidden away very well where other people do not have access to areas of your home. We also hear about we haven't had yet in Superior but maybe hold up of drug stores, but we do watch for those things. People addicted to medications in other areas of Wisconsin have held up some drug stores trying to get those medications. Prescription fraud does go on here in Superior. We get calls frequently from 
pharmacies where someone has called in a fraudulent prescription, that they're trying to fool the pharmacy that a doctor has written this, them this type of prescription. Our pharmacies are doing a fantastic job of double checking all prescriptions that come into them and um, we go and intervene when these people try to pick up this prescription medication. But there's also doctor shopping. People will go from emergency room to emergency room complaining of certain problems all because they're addicted to a possible pain medication that they're trying to get. And some problems of pills. The prescription drug abuser, it takes a lot of our time in law enforcement and medical to respond to possible overdoses or people who are having other reactions to prescription medication abuse. There's suicide or attempted suicide that will go on with this when people are either under the influence of these medications, their mind is not working appropriately, or they get have gotten so depressed and whatnot being addicted to these medications. It's very hazardous for law enforcement and emergency personnel responding to these people because their mind is not their own. It's not acting appropriately and they act out a lot of times in aggressive manners. It is a crime to possess another person's medication. Like it says here on the slide, just a possession of another person's medication, you can get a fine at minimum of $500 and six months in jail. If you sell someone else's prescription medication, it can, it's a felony. You can spend time in prison for doing that. So at the police department and the sheriff's department, our uh, office there, we do have the pharmaceutical drop box. It has been a huge success by the amount of times we've had to go and empty that drop box. We've seen prescription meds, over-the-counter meds, um, liquid medications come in there, which is fantastic for that not going into our system, our, our water treatment system, and also it's not getting into the hands of maybe children or juveniles who might be looking at uh, using different prescription meds, even over-the-counter medications. So just in December, when we first started the Dropbox, we had 37 pounds of pills and approximately 25 pounds of liquid medications or inhalers, these type of things. And in the total of the three months that we have had the drop box, we've had 70, approximately 74 pounds just in pills. That's a lot of pounds of just pill medication staying out of our water system and out of the hands of our children and other people in our community. So for the process of using the drop box, we ask that you cross your names off your prescription bottles or you can scratch the labels off. There is, when you come into the police department, at the address shown there on your screen, it's in our lobby area. So you have to enter in through the door into the police department, small lobby area, and we are only open during 8 to 4.30 for those medications to be dropped off. We ask that you not put needles or syringes or thermometers, you know, nothing that's going to harm us if we get poked while we're trying to empty the drop box. And then the thermometers, we worry about if it contains mercury and stuff in the thermometers and they might break while in the drop box. So that could be very hazardous to us. So please don't bring those things in. And one thing about that, you know, just the hours that were open. You also cannot give the medications to a police officer. If you can't make it there during those hours, we're not allowed to collect those for people individually. You do have to bring them to the drop box um, yourself or if you have a friend or family member that could help you out with that and bring those things in. So thank you very much for your time and we'll pass the microphone back. All right. Um, so now this next slide just shows our uh, promotional material for the Dropbox. Um, we just want to remind people to please bring any unwanted, unused, or expired medication to the Dropbox rather than um, throwing it in your trash where it could be diverted, leaving it in your medicine cabinet where someone could potentially take it, or flushing it down the toilet because of the um, human health and environmental impacts we mentioned before. 
So these are just some helpful links um, that were used, or for information that was used in the presentation. We do have our um, Dropbox link, the ci.superior.wi.us slash rxdropbox, which has more information about the Dropbox. Um, and also our Superior Stormwater blog. Um, that's a blog we post usually a few times per week. We do have some information on there about the Dropbox, as well as um, posts about various stormwater and environmental issues, as well as local events um, pertaining to water pollution and uh, the environment. Um, so thank you for tuning in to the Environmental Matters webinar series. This is just a list of some upcoming webinars that we have. Um, and I want to remind everyone that for every live webinar you attend between now and June 1st, you'll be entered into a drawing for a free rain barrel. And if you do not win the free rain barrel, or even if you do and you just want multiples, we are also having a rain barrel sale. You can find more information about that at ci.superior.wi.us slash sale, or you can just give us a call at 715-394-0392. Um, if anyone has any questions, they can submit them now. I'm also going to put a poll up on the screen quickly about the Dropbox, and then we will wrap it up. So you should be able to see the poll. We're just asking if you've used the pharmaceutical Dropbox, and I'll give another maybe 10 seconds to answer the poll. Okay, thank you so much for attending. Um, we really appreciate it, and hopefully we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you.